Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I'm Vinu Anand at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leaders interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven formal success formulae for many. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such industry heavyweight on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Vimal Chodia. He is a distinguished CEO and entrepreneur, standing out as a beacon of business acumen and leadership. With a dynamic career spanning diverse industry verticals, precision, the cornerstone of his remarkable achievements and a career timeline is an impressive testament to his multifaceted skills. He's currently serving as the director of VGS Electrical Solutions Private Limited, a position he has held for a remarkable span of 17 years and a role wherein his leadership has been instrumental in overseeing the company's operations, spearheading business development initiatives and ensuring strict adherence to regulatory compliance. Could you provide an overview of your professional background and experience, highlighting key milestones and achievements in your career, sir? Morning Over to you, to you. madam. And good morning to my lovely audience. Uh, I wish I could see the audience. It would have been a better interaction. But anyways, my greetings to all of you. And let me start with a gratitude note to all my experiences and learnings from all my past experiences. And I keep asking myself every day, why I do what I do? I think that's the best question to start, kick start your day. And that sets the note for the road ahead. Uh, the career has been about three decades of experience, I mean, from one extreme to another, and I've enjoyed every learning in the process. And I still feel there's a phenomenal learning ahead of me. And maybe this is the reason I'm on this platform to offer my services, purely as a non-executive while looking ahead as a new journey. Thank you. Great. So your tenure as CEO at Superbar Middle East was marked by notable accomplishments. So could you let our viewers know some of the strategic planning initiatives you implemented and the outcomes achieved during your leadership here? Fantastic. Let me talk about this journey. Yeah. Uh, let me give you a small snapshot or a brief of where I come from. My ancestors come from a place called Rajasthan. So where in the 60s, survival was the only I mean, hope. There was no resources and absolutely nothing in that state. And we had to migrate to other states, other countries, purely for survival. So call it genetic in some manner. And also being the eldest in the family, I had a big role to play. And Superbar was a very unique experience in the sense I had to rewrite the rules of the game. I mean, challenge myself and my stakeholders and the resources available to see if there is a genuine possibility of me executing such a plan. Well, if you look behind, I was always into contracting, system integration, and a lot of other things, cross-border trading and everything. And there was a point in time when a dilemma, or call it an opportunity crisis, where normally people do forward integration. I said, let me do backward integration and see if I can kickstart a new venture where it is again on a foreign land. I left my comfort zone in India, went to the Middle East, 
because they had a lot of exposure to this beautiful country. Where it's, you have the skyline, amazing skyline in every part of UAE, call it. Uh, and of course, India is growing and the other countries are not. So this was a process to understand if I could A, start a product from scratch, design, develop, everything, let me tell you, was bootstrapped. Uh, again, in a foreign land, all alone. And there was a shark in the market. So probably that was the best uh, incentive to play the game. And I set the ball rolling. And this was sometime in 2016, 17, where I had to literally hunt ground for everything, right from finding the new brand, finding a place, finding the resources, finding people, finding machinery, finding equipment, finding design tools, finding vendors, creating the entire ecosystem to get going. And despite all the odds, yes, of course, there were challenges. There were terrible days. I would say every day was terrible. And literally at the end of the day, you say, no, I don't want to come again tomorrow. And the next day, you're there 10 minutes before your time. So that was very interesting, very interesting. And in that hot, humid conditions where everything is diverse, everything against you, the weather, the people, the attitude, because when you're a startup, the whole ecosystem is not supporting you. It's very difficult. And to pull it off, and a very critical product. So what I designed was an electrical bus bar, which is a power distribution modular trunking system used in entire infrastructure, industry, high-rise buildings. Every high-rise, it's mandatory to have this infrastructure in place. It's part of your electrical switch gear, part of the electrical power distribution network. And so this is like your lifeline in the building or in your ecosystem. So to create a product, obviously, uh, the market in the Middle East is very conscious about where you come from, that's your background, that's your origin, and then what certification, the validations does your product or solution offer, So, which is a benchmark. So A, I had to get that because we being Indian, and of, of course there were challenges, more challenges than what a European or American or a Japanese would face in that environment. So A, I had to get my Italian partner on board because we give the confidence to the market, convince them to come on board, so that was a, quite an uphill task. And then the product, yes, it, we rolled it, I would say within a year, which was again a very unbelievable journey in every sense. And we went for the world's best certifications at that point of time, which normally a startup of my size will never do it. They would rather go step by step in stages over a period of time because the family is so big what you have to do. But I told myself, no, I will put myself on an endurance test let me see if I pass that. And then that gives me the confidence to go to the market and you know let the certification and validation speak for itself rather than me blowing my trumpet. That actually was a very good move and it helped me phenomenally to funnel the brand into a situation where I could generate inquiries. Yes, executing them was a different challenge again, but at least we were in a place comfortable where people are at least sending us inquiries. Normally it's very difficult to get on an approved list of any of these big consultants who are actually our godfathers. I mean, without these consultants, it's impossible to survive in the business. So I would also like to add a note of thank you to all of them who stood by me, who supported me, who endured with me, and who also bared me during that journey. I can go wow. on. It's a beautiful wow. journey. On and on. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing and an inspiring one. Thank you. Truly inspiring. Yes, sir. <laughs> So could you describe your leadership style and philosophy when it okay. comes to managing and inspiring your teams? Fantastic. That's okay. Uh, let, uh, let me put it this way. None of us are perfect. Let's be very honest about this. None of us are perfect. And no management school or no management guru can put everything into you. Okay, You must do this and you must not do this. So we learn everything by situations and by our attitudes, I would say. That's where that, that teaches us a lot. And the people around us are, they're the product of the environment I create. Of course, there'll be different people. The teams are going to be different. Everyone's going to have a different motive. And when you're a startup, obviously, they're all pulling you in different ways. And how you bring them, how you align them to your thought process and how you make them understand the purpose. And let me say, I mean, I, had, I was blessed to have a good team. And though, yes, there were challenges because they were not sure of their future in a startup, in a bootstrap startup. 
and they had come from big multinationals. So obviously there was an insecurity in them. So maybe the output was not 100%. And the expectations of the organization was beyond what they could deliver. So to get them perform their roles, and yes, it, it, it was a blessing for me, I would say. I enjoyed working with them. And yes, they did walk the extra mile, all of them, all of them, let me say, despite the odds, despite the whatever challenges or insecurities, it, it, it was a good bunch of people to learn from them, also make them learn, make them walk with me and move on, keep learning because for them also it was, it, it was like each of them had were doing multitasking, which was not a possibility in their previous roles. They were just, you know, like horses with closed vision. They were just asked to perform certain tasks and that's it. Their career was just going step by step by step. But here they had the opportunity to prove themselves. You know, like even a shop floor fitter, he could be much beyond that. He could literally, he was an engineer. I would not even call him a fitter because that was the kind of output I was getting from my team. Wow. Not even that inspiring. You are even, you know, you have those leadership qualities, which I suppose every individual must have when you have a big team. Well, uh, when your problems are limitless and your problems, uh, sorry, and your opportunities are limitless, I think that's a good combination to get you going. Yes, at times you need certain, you know, off-track things which build you, which make you what you are today. Well, I, I think it's all the situations that make you who you are. And uh, I think we learn a lot from this journey. We learn, we learn yes. a the phenomenal yes. learning. And if you have the attitude to learn and deploy what you learn in the right manner, I think there's, there's a good outcome. I'm, I'm not talking from monetary perspectives because I feel my learnings are beyond my network. So I, I can't compare the both. If somebody would ask me to compare, put it on a chart, uh, my learnings are phenomenal. Great, sir. Great. So, like, how and when uh, did you develop an interest in ESG and corporate governance? Mm -hmm. Yes, these are good terms, actually. Very good terms. And I'm happy the world is embracing these terms like ESG, corporate governance. I mean, today, if you look at my country, India, what we are today, it's purely because of corporate governance. If the world is respecting us to this level, I think we should salute corporate governance because the ball is rolling. Yes, we have a lot to achieve, but at least we let the world know that we care. We care for the environment. We care for the people. We care for corporate governance. We respect the regulator and everything. I'm saying we collectively. Yes. That's very important. And uh, I mean, see, even the other day, Mr. Narayan Murthy was saying, we are respected today. It's only because of, I, I think corporate governance is very important as a country. And if we have to be a global power, we have to pull up our socks and do much more than what we are today. And if you talk about ESG, I mean, okay, if I look back into my career, my first exposure was from Japan. And what I learned from them was phenomenal. Cultures and attitudes and how you respect what you do. And most important was reuse. Reuse was in a, it was a very basic terminology where we, if you put it into ESG, which we call care for the environment. So I would say reuse also is a part of the process. So I was bringing plants in lockdown conditions from European countries, from Far East, bringing them to India because India at that point of time in the nineties, we never had the technology. We never had local manufacturing. So I, th I think I did my part for ESG in the sense, I brought in a lot of plants, equipment, capital goods into the country for use. So you save foreign exchange and you put life into things what people would actually scrap it. And uh, I think so I, I learned it the hard way. And uh, now yes, everything is, uh, they defined very nicely and kept track, but ESC is, I think is gonna be a part of us. The more we try to disconnect, the more it's going to catch us. Because people are watching us, countries are watching us, the regulators are watching us, and I think even our families are watching us, right? Our friends are watching us, what we do, and how we care for each other. And it starts from the people. 
if you care for your people, obviously you're going to care for everything around. So I think it's 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 a very well networked process. We need to adapt. We need to define, redefine. We need to learn a lot of things because it, it, it it's 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 not easy. It, it's the fine print is very big, very big. So everyone, I think the entire ecosystem needs to come in proactively, accept this, embrace this, and adopt it. It's not going to be easy, but we can. We can. Great. So as an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? Uh, I'm learning ESG from the book, honestly, today. I would It would be wrong to say I'm an expert, but I would like to learn. I would like to be an expert down the road. So if I get the right opportunity where people are going to let me learn, I'm going to grab that opportunity. So for me, I think it's going to be a eye opener in many aspects which I don't know, and how I'm going to deploy my attitude to implementing those for the corporate and for the society and for the environment. That's that's a learning curve. Yep. Thank you. What are some of your most remarkable uh, changes you have seen in your field? with changes in technology and um, what changes do you expect to see with the advent of uh, IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, uh, big data and web 3.0? Spot on. The entire world is talking this terms, but uh, everybody is just using this terminology. I would say big data is the new currency, if you ask me. So if you're going to adopt this new currency, everything is interlinked, everything is intertwined. And uh, we can't take, say, a blockchain and just adopt that or just take AI and adopt that. I think AI is also going to help ML, right? Machine learning, you need, so everything is interlinked. Everything is, it's, it's a phenomenal new journey for me. And everything is reinvented. I mean, we have done all this in a very different way, very crudely in the past, but looking ahead uh, with so much of disruption in every segment, every sector, it's, it's phenomenal, it's, it's phenomenal. And uh, yes, big data, I think big data is gonna disrupt the entire process of AI, of ML, of blockchain to make it work for us. And yes, my only concern, if you talk about this at a very superficial way is ethics. How do the regulators put those control systems in place so it works for the good of everyone because not everybody can adopt this as a common man. So how we make it uh, socially responsible, I think, I think that's a challenge. We need to address that first. I mean, set the rule book in place because we are learning, right? Yeah, it's just new. All these technologies are new. So yes, we are evolving. We are rewriting almost every day. And when I say we, I'm talking about the big corporates or the big disruptors in the game. And we simply follow them because they push down tons of data through us. And how much of it we digest, how much of it we understand, how much of it we can implement, those are challenges. And that's what a group of thought, think, thought leaders are going to think, I mean, debate, and weigh the pros and cons before we you know, start adopting them to whatever degree the organization needs them. It's there, it's there in every sphere today. Thank you, thank you. We can't, we can't think of a world without these uh, terminologies which you just use. We can't go back in time and live a basic life without a smartphone. Yes, I agree the smartphones are smarter than us, but it's we who build it, right? So we'll always be smarter than them. Very true. Human brain is always going to be one step ahead because you're the ones who create it. Yes, we have to be masters. Yes. I believe. Yes. Masters with leadership qualities and masters with... So it's like it's, it's like a package and you are one of those like all-in-one package. Well, uh, it's, it's for my audience or it's for my people, or my team to judge who I am. But uh, I would say we are all like footprints in the soil. In the desert, I would say. Not soil, in the desert, right? Uh, it doesn't stay for long. So we do our best, we do our part. 
Okay. Thank you for sir, sharing all your knowledge and your inputs. It was great. Sir, we are building a community of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge mm -hmm. and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. What are your thoughts about this initiative taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hewal Mehta, and the whole World Development Corporation team? Firstly, I'm waiting to meet this gentleman because I've never got a chance to meet them in person. I've only heard them speak virtually. And I think what they have started, this platform first, I mean, kudos to the platform because it's one of its kind, I think, in India, if I'm right, though we have the ISEA in place. But this is a private initiative for uh, thought leaders who can all come on a common platform and uh, add value to each other, add value to the community. And these two guys, I think, are the catalysts, if I'm right, if to put it in a very... I I've seen their profile and they are hardcore tech guys, if whatever little I know of them. And they're trying to bring a unison among these the community to offer quality people to the industry if i'm right and i think they're doing a great job in filtering talent that's very important because they're like the funnel so they're going to do all that uh, what do you call the validations and i'm sure they're going to do a great job to put the right people for the industry. It's a network, so wishing them good luck. And I, I'm sure there's phenomenal opportunity because India is growing. Corporate governance is uh, becoming the buzzword for corporates. And yes, there is an abundant shortage of good talent. We have phenomenal talent, I would say. Quantity-wise, yes. But if you're looking at quality, uh, these platforms, they do the job. I hope I'm right. I mean, that's, it. that's the impression I get by reviewing their, uh, by whatever engagements I've done this far and interactions with the Institute. Thank you so much for your kind words, sir. Wow, great. It was fantastic conversing with you. And I'm confident that your insights will inspire future leaders. Thank you so much, Jodia, sir, for joining us today. Wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, trust that this initiative by this Directors Institute unquestionably has expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day, sir. Let me thank you, your team and your support team for putting up this uh, interview today. And it, it was a good experience for me. And I must let me also thank my audience for hearing me and my journey, my stories, my experiences, and my vision board for the road ahead, uh, which is very important. And what I want to stress is, I mean, from an executive role, now I'm looking for a journey as a non-executive. I mean, I want to add phenomenal value I like to bring value on the table. At the same time, I also want to learn phenomenally from wherever I go. That's very important. So, yeah. Good luck to all of us. And let's hope for a better world. Have a great weekend, madam. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, sir. Have a wonderful time ahead. Thank so, you. Thanks. Thank you. So.